Hello, you're liable to hear some banging of doors around me. I'm in a barn. The wind is blowing very hard outside. It's not too bad here, but you will hear some uh, barn doors banging. Sorry about that. Uh, it's very cold outside, and I uh, shouldn't take too long with this. Uh, this is my 88th day's first video. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, number of the video to look at that whole chart described is 56.2. I did the research. I looked. Yesterday I showed you uh, uh, prepositional phrases. Now, that introduced two new ideas. One was uh, the idea of a, of a phrase, meaning uh, a group of words without a subject and predicate pair that work as a single sentence part. But it all, I also introduced the idea of complementation, where the object of the preposition completes the job of the preposition. Well, I'm going to leave phrases for the moment, and I want to go on with the idea of uh, uh, complementation. Uh, here, are, here are two uh, complements that are, uh, well, they're, they're not, I'm, I'm, I'm pausing here because they're, they're complements that occur in the, in the predicate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, the, the, these are called these are called subject complements. These would be co uh, predicate complements, and these would be called subject complements. Even though I'll explain about the fact that the word predicate is there. All right, a direct object. Very easy. Uh, direct objects. This would be plural. They receive the action from a transitive verb directly. A transitive, uh, a transitive verb. And back in the morphology section, I explained that, well, first of all, a verb is a word that shows action or state of being. Now, of those verbs that show action, there are, um, there are transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. Well, a transitive verb is a verb whose action can go across to an object. That word trans. Now, now you'll find that back in the morphology, a more complete discussion of it. Well, here's the way they work. A punched is a verb. Uh, it passes the test. Today I punched. Yesterday I punched. I have punched. It passes the test as a verb. Well, he punched. There we've got our subject predicate pair. Uh, actually, I could do this right uh, on the board here. Subject, there's the predicate, and he punched me. Well, the action of the punch came to me. Uh, it land landed on, say, my nose. He punched me. And I'll, I'll diagram this again in a second video. But there's the way you would uh, diagram a direct object. You have a vertical line. Uh, there is the direct object. It, of course, could be a compound. Uh, and indirect objects, or indirect objects, they ibit. There's an abbreviation that I've used a lot uh, in the, the class so far, in the course so far. That means the same as above. So indirect objects receive the action from certain verbs uh, indirectly. Now, I should back up and tell you that those have been intransitive verbs that I've been working with so far because uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to deal yet with a direct object. So you've seen intransitive verbs. Uh, uh, well, now, uh, there are a few transitive verbs uh, where the action um, can go to an indirect object. They are always accompanied with a direct object, and they work... Uh, uh, with uh, a supplied two or four before them. Uh, let's see, I didn't write an example in here. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you an example, and then in the next video I'll do it for you. If I say he gave uh, a dollar, well then uh, he, gave, he gave dollar. He gave me a dollar. Well, the thing he gave was the dollar. But it came indirectly, it, it came to me. So you could say, he gave to me a dollar. Gave is one of those verbs which will um, sometimes have an indirect object. Uh, let me tell you this now, even though I'll mention it again in the second video. In many languages, there is another case ending for indirect objects. In Latin, there is. And in German, there is. Uh, uh, in English, no. Uh, he punched me. He gave me a dollar. It's me in both cases. In German, this would be mich, whereas uh, he gave me, that would be mir. Uh, so mich and mir, those both mean me in German, 
uh, and you have to uh, know the difference to uh, speak German correctly. Uh, other languages do that too. That's called the dative case. The dative, uh, well, that's the dative case. This is the uh, accusative case. Uh, but uh, sometimes in English that's called the objective case. I'm backing up the morphology now. Uh, but dative does not really occur in English because we do it with word order. Uh, if I said, uh, if I were talking about a tiger and myself, I could say he gave me it. He gave me the tiger. Or he gave it me. Well, then he gave the ti uh, me to the tiger to eat. We do it with word order. He gave me it. Me is the indirect object. He gave to me it. He gave it me. He gave to it me. He fed me to the tiger. Um, all right, uh, now predicate nouns and predicate adjectives, they follow linking verbs. And linking verbs are verbs that you need to recognize. You need to be able to recognize them. They're on that chart. Not every single one. In the British system, I believe they're called copulative verbs, I think. But in any case, in, in America, we call them linking verbs. And they either rename or describe the subject. So, but the thing is, they are in the predicate side of the, uh, of the clause. Uh, if I said, uh, the smart man ran, well, smart would uh, modify the subject. If I said, the man is smart, smart still modifies the subject. But now you see it's on the predicate side. Well, this should become a little bit more clear in the next video where I'll show you how we uh, Kellogg uh, diagrams these three. Uh, in a good set of notes, you would probably be putting them in there. But I'm limited by the size of my, uh, my blackboard. All right, uh, uh, just one more video today. I'll be back directly.